super PAC money, the phenomenon of the super PACs that was unleashed by Citizens United. In 2011, there were 196 donors that accounted for over 80% of the super PAC money, and it came in in contributions of $100,000 each or, or more. So, I mean, think of how few sources there are for $100,000 checks to, to, to PACs to run negative advertising. That's not a, a process that the American people are participating in where we turn from citizens into spectators to watch a show that very few produce. And, um, and so there's a lot of different ways to look at the money problem, but that I think it's important that we sort of spread the word if we can about it's not just magnitude of money, it's the sources are so few, and that leads to the biggest problem with the money, which is it's not out of civic virtue. It's not like a burst of civic enthusiasm that these $100,000 checks are coming in. It's a business transaction. It's an investment. It's an investment like bribery is an investment. You're, you're giving it, and you expect something back. And that's why the government now is so responsive to that 0.5% who are, and it shouldn't surprise us, um, that, that they're not doing it for nothing. They're doing it because they expect results, um, especially with corporate money. I mean, think about why would a corporation spend money? It does it as an investment because it expects a return. Uh, and so the expectation of return is the corruption aspect. And you can have very good people in Congress, and there are very good people in Congress, there's very good people in politics. Um, but inevitably, the system is corrupt. Uh, and the system is corrupt because of this money system. And no matter how good you are going in, you have to rationalize, well, I won't do any good if I'm not here. And I won't be here if I don't sort of toe the line to the funders. And I've talked to senators who, who've said, you know, these guys come in, and they will show me the video of the attack ad that the super PAC's going to run against me if I don't reconsider a position. I mean, it's like a visit from the leg breakers, you know? It's, it's like, get, get back in line. Uh, so, so that's a huge problem. And if we don't fix that, um, and, and we can't fix it unless we overturn Citizens United, because right now, we don't have the power. We're not allowed to limit those contributions. Um, if we don't fix it, that's not democracy. It's not government of, for, and by the people. It's plutocracy. It's government of the very, very, very few. So that's the one problem. But the other problem that is not as closely examined, possibly because of the election year, and it's good that we're hearing about the super PACs and the money and politics. But the other problem that Citizens United stands for is we now have in our country something that the framers of the Constitution would have been appalled and shocked at. Um, every generation of Americans up, um, has wrestled in some way with this problem. And that's the, the question of whether big, powerful corporations have a veto on what the government does. And we now have a corporate veto in America. And it's not just the money influence. It's actually, a, 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 in effect, a veto. And here's how it works. Just since Citizens United was decided, I could run through probably a dozen cases of, of public interest laws that have been wiped out, taken off the books, because they were claimed to have violated corporate speech. So the most recent, 2009, if you think um, Congress hasn't done anything lately, they actually did do something. In 2009, um, Congress enacted new cigarette warning labels as part of a public health measure. Remember the cigarette warning labels we have now? So we'll go back to 1967, they're very plain. They say something like the government thinks this might not be bad for you, but we know how bad and irresponsible government is now, right? So it's sort of, you know, the tobacco companies like, like that idea that, you know, it's sort of, well, the government says this, but, you know, Joe Camel says, give it a try. Um, every other country, if you go abroad, you see there's, there's plain paper markings over the stark warning. Sometimes there's gruesome pictures of what the, the, those products will do to, to you if you get addicted to them, as you will, if you continue to smoke. Um, and that's what Congress wanted. The 2009 law said FDA develop much more aggressive, visible warnings because these old ones aren't working. Um, and this was after the cigarette industry, the tobacco companies, had literally been found to be racketeers 
uh, a 2007 federal case proven at trial, upheld on appeal, Republican and Democratic appointed judges agreed that they had engaged in a racketeering conspiracy to defraud the American people, addict children to a drug that would kill them and try to hide it. Um, that was, that's not my rhetoric, that's what the judge said in the decision, so that's why Congress did this. Well, that got wiped out about two weeks ago. It violates corporate speech to make the cigarette companies do that. That, that law got struck down. Um, and I can give a lot of other examples of food laws, energy laws, environmental laws, corporate speech violations. Um, so this corporate veto is the other big problem with Citizens United. And, and I'll run through some stories uh, in, that I talk about in my book about the, this theory about corporate speech is what led to Citizens United. That's why we have that. That's what the five justices relied on when they were struck down and became final law. And it has been doing this increasingly aggressively to, to veto laws that the public wants so that would serve the American interest, the interest of all of us, rather than a private corporate profit interest. Um, and so, you know, that's the other piece of Citizens United, that when we talk about a constitutional amendment and how we're going to fix it, we need to fix the campaign finance laws. We also need to make sure, though, that once we have a system that can function to pass laws that people want, that those laws aren't struck down because of the corporate veto of the corporate speech rights. Um, and so, this, this opportunity, the reason I call it an opportunity that we have now, uh, about Citizens United is because it was so striking that what the court did. It was so aggressive, it was so activist, that it has woken up the American people in a lot of ways um, to the necessity of doing the heavy lifting of citizenship that we now have to do to overturn it. And if you, we've done polling, um, as have others, and we've worked with Peter Hart Associates, a um, reputable nonpartisan pollster who has worked for Wall Street Journal and NBC and others. And uh, the number, uh, the percentage of Americans who condemn Citizens United say it must be overturned with an amendment uh, is now at about 78%. And that includes Republicans, it includes Democrats, it includes Independents. And that partly reflects um, the leadership, frankly, of, of some people in, in both parties. So President Obama, we may remember, you know, chastising the court in the State of the Union address two, two years ago about Citizens United. That was a really a very important moment um, for him to do that. But he also, and less visibly, uh, a week or two before in a, in a statement, uh, right after the decision came out, called it a strike at democracy itself. And I think that's accurate. And, and he was not alone, of course, uh, in the Democratic Party, but less noticed, perhaps, is Senator John McCain. Um, who has been very clear about the, the danger to the Republic of Citizens United and the error of it. And, um, you know, I think it re his, his response is a real um, uh, credit to him and it reflects, I think, the, the wide respect that he has across the aisle um, when he does his straight talk. And let me just share some of his straight talk. It's very short, but he, he like President Obama, responded um, to the decision. And he said, he said it was the worst decision uh, that the Supreme Court had ever done. He said that the uh, court should be ashamed, were his words. And uh, he then uh, wasn't done. He said, what the Supreme Court did is a combination of arrogance, naivete, and stupidity, the likes of which I have never seen. So that's Senator John McCain. Um, we have quotes from Tea Party members who, who get the danger, and so this is the opportunity that we have. Is you know, in a, in a we're told we're divided. We're told Americans are just hopelessly divided on everything. It's not true with this. Americans want a fair, equal system on voting. If nothing else, we may agree about what we're going to vote for or what we're going to do after we have the power to do it. But I think you know, don't give up on you know the family member or the friend who you haven't been able to talk to because of the political issues in talking about this issue, we can work together.